This is Witchbase News for Friday the 28th of April 2023. I'm Commander Burr. An Elite Dangerous News this week. A probe is sent beyond the maelstrom barrier and we have a guide to peeling back the mysteries of multicrew. As always if you enjoy our videos please do hit the like button and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of our Elite Dangerous content. And if you'd like to help by directly supporting our work you can also join our Patreon. Links to that and everything else are below. If you've ever wondered about the mysteries of telepresent multicrew in Elite Dangerous and were too afraid to ask or perhaps you weren't even aware of its existence then reddit user and twitch streamer GamePro03 is here to help. This week they published a handy dandy guide to the intricacies of the often maligned, ignored and underused Elite Dangerous feature. In case you're one of the unaware, telepresent multicrew allows a player to jump into another players ship from literally anywhere in the galaxy and use some of their on ship weaponry and even fly ship launched fighters. If you're out exploring in the deep black no matter how far away from everything you are telepresent multicrew can put you in the thick of the action in the bubble or colonia temporarily without affecting your own vessel in any fashion. Similarly if a commander in the deep black wants to show off their latest discovery to someone in the bubble first hand telepresence will facilitate that. The multicrew system can at first at least be a little strangulated and dare I say it obtuse to get into. It requires some keys to be bound that aren't usefully set to anything at all by default but once you're in and you understand how it works it can be hugely useful. Rini and I for example use it all the time for filming some of our more complex third person footage. GamePro often streams live on Twitch with their multicrew slots open for anyone to join so they're in a perfect position to understand the power and the pitfalls of the system. Suffice to say I've linked to the guide below and you'll also find their Commander Vallero's guide to optimising your router settings to better facilitate and optimise Elite Dangerous in multiplayer sessions. Just in case that proves useful to you as it can help with multiplayer connectivity issues in the game overall. A news item appeared on Galnet this week confirming to no one's great surprise really that experiments in resisting the EM pulse emitted at the centre of the Thargoid maelstroms have been a resounding success. Experiments conducted by Professor Palin and Cycling Proficiency Certificate holder Ram Tar have demonstrated that what they refer to as unclassified relics emit an energy field on a similar frequency to the maelstrom pulse when exposed to a modulated electrical charge. Unclassified relics are what the player base refer to as green relics, pickled relics or more commonly grelics. Grelics are what is now produced when an ordinary guardian relic is placed into an active Thargoid surface site of the kind that's been present in the game since around 2017. Up until the battle of HIP 22460 placing a guardian relic in Thargoid machinery and activating it would cause the installation to have an almost allergic reaction to the presence of the guardian technology generating a huge amount of heat and generating a series of repulsor type emissions until the objects were finally ejected unchanged. Since the events of 22460 and the detonation of the Proteus wave those same relics are now returned tainted somehow when they're rejected arcing with a green Thargoid style energy. Palin and Ramtar were accepting the Grelics and paying handsomely for them and there was some community speculation that some kind of secret community goal had been running via the two Grelic collectors and the winner of that CG would produce… something but without any more specific direct evidence it's hard to see how that might still be the case. The tests that were reported on this week involved fitting an unmanned probe with a form of pulse neutraliser similar to that used to counter Thargoid EMP shutdown fields but instead based on technology derived from Guardian Grelic research. When the unmanned probes were faced with the EM pulse towards the centre of the maelstrom their own enhanced field neutralisers were triggered and they sailed through the disturbance unhindered. 
What became of them at the centre is unknown as their signals were lost shortly after but the important takeaway from the whole article is that with mass production of the enhanced units now in the offing it does seem extremely likely that commanders will be piercing the veil at the centre of the maelstroms in the very near future. With Guardian Relics and specifically the Grelic variant of the Guardian Relic being apparently key to the countermeasures needed to pierce the clouds there has been some speculation around the burr pit community that Grelics at the very least will be needed in quantity to unlock access to the new enhanced EMP neutralizer. As part of that same conversation we have witnessed a degree of anxiety from the community that the bar for access to the centre of the clouds might be set quite high particularly when coupled with the requirement for caustic sinks to survive the clouds in the first place. Unlocking the sinks is already quite the task so we imagine there's going to need to be quite a balancing act for Frontier to make accessing the centre achievable and rewarding whilst at the same time not so challenging as to end up putting the more casual players off from even attempting it. FDev have shown some awareness of the barriers to entry for the games top tier of PvE content of late and in turn have shown a desire to lower those barriers for the vast majority of players making the harder to obtain guardian weaponry unnecessary to participate in the Thargoid war and releasing instead very easy to obtain off the shelf weapons that are more than capable of doing the job. It seems unlikely that, having shown that awareness and desire, they would then abandon it. Either way, it is seemingly likely that update 15 currently due on the 9th of May will be the point when we'll start to find out. As to what actually lies at the centre waiting for us, if you ask most commanders in the game right now they'll likely give you the same answer and I'd imagine if you've heard the logs from Jameson's crash site or from Carmichael Point in HIP 16824 you'll probably come to the same conclusion. That conclusion being the long rumoured but never seen, in action at least, Thargoid motherships, sometimes referred to as hive vessels. Whilst I don't believe it's ever been directly confirmed it's generally accepted in most circles that the Thargoid surface installations are themselves crashed Thargoid motherships left over from the first Thargoid war and the effects of the mycoid virus. The real burning question is of course if indeed those mysterious clouds do contain Thargoid vessels then what gameplay can we expect to be associated with them when we are face to face with them or should that be face to Mandeville. Will you be trying out Multicrew after seeing this weeks new guide? Did you even know Multicrew existed and have you already built a ship to explore the depths of the maelstroms? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.